seventh commandment and this is again uh, a God helping us know how to love our neighbor and specifically with how I love my neighbor by what I do with my money what I do with my money so this always starts when you're talking about money you got to start by saying whose money is it and where did I get my money because if I say it's my money and I worked hard for my money so I get to do whatever I want with my money then I'm the boss of my money. But, you sound like my husband used to talk exactly <laughs> like that. Let's see what the Bible says about, about our stuff. Um, look at passage 443 there, from James 1.17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights. So actually, if there's any gifts that I've been given in my life, anything that I own, anything that I enjoy, where did they come from? Um, the Lord, yeah, who made them and allowed me to have them. And how does he give them to me? There's a couple ways the Lord delivers our possessions to us. This is question 100 and Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 17 and 18. And this is pretty common still today. Those, these words are uh, thousands of years old. You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. So Eric, you might say, I put my time in, I put my work week in, and I deserve my paycheck. And God says, well, actually... I'm the one who gave you your muscles and your brain and the ability to put those two together. Um, so it, it's not your hard working, it's not your intelligence, it's not your dedication. It is the Lord your God being kind to you. Yep. So that means that God gets to tell us what we should do with our money. And that's, that's hard for a person to hear. But a Christian says, okay, Lord, you tell me. So there are four ways that God wants us to use our money. And um, you're going to find it on page 102, but I'll give you the proof passages too, so you don't have to take my word for it. So, 
The first way God wants us to use our money is passage 450. This is 1 Timothy 5, verse 8. It says, If anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for his immediate family, he is denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. What does that tell you I'm supposed to use my money for? Your family. My family. Yeah, so... Um, one of my past churches, we had a guy, um, a guy who would fight with his wife. He had control of the bank account, and he'd squeeze her. And so um, he made her def default on her car payment, so she got her car towed. Then he went, went to work, and he um, went in cussing and yelling at her, at her at work, trying to get her fired so she wouldn't have any income. Because if he controls the income, he controls the woman. So, um, in comes the church, we get involved, and, and after looking at it, we had to do, do uh, what the church has to do and say, you are not a Christian. No Christian man would ever treat his woman like that. Most of the hurt that we find in, in each other's lives, how many of us are feeling hurt and beaten because we actually got beat up? Compared to... How often you feel hurt and beaten because someone was just mean to you. Someone just ran their mouth off at you, right? And, um, and it's not like you're dripping blood, but you're hurting in here. And so that's what the Eighth Commandment is written to, to combat and to fight. It shows us how can I love you by building you up with words. So um, I practice this like in our, sometimes in the school, um, when the kids kind of in the dead of winter or toward the end of the year and they get snippy with each other because they're all they just want to be on summer vacation and be done with and that's when the mouths come out and they start being rah, 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 to each other so I actually say today we're going to stop the class because everybody's crabby and we have to go around the room and everybody has to say something um, that builds up the person next to them and they get all embarrassed or whatever you know and don't want to do it but by the time we've gone around the whole class, you can feel the change in there as they've built each other up. And they get to hear every person in that room, 26 kids, um, complimenting each other and, and talking about how, how good somebody's at doing this or what they appreciate about doing that and how it lifts each other up. If a Christian wants to talk about who we believe in, we believe in the triune God, right? We believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So anytime you find a Christian creed, it's going to talk about, I believe in God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And in the Apostles' Creed, not only do we say, I believe in God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, but we also talk about what did God the Father do? What did God the Son do? What did God the Holy Spirit do? And what did he do for me? So, notice how the Ten Commandments were talking about what I'm supposed to do. And I haven't, right, I broke them all. When we see how messed up we were, then the creed says, okay, okay, stop looking at the rules, stop looking at your failures, stop looking at your sins. Now look at uh, I had an inspiration, a revelation. I'm going to uh, start with a passage, uh, something from the, right from the book of Genesis, in chapter 4. The people are getting together and they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven and let us make for ourselves a name. Otherwise, we will be scattered. See, the world's first the skyscraper, it, it wasn't built for any kind of economic or, or, or business reasons. If you listen to that passage, it says, we want to build this just so the whole world can look at us and we can stick our thumbs in our shirts and puff out and say, look what we did. You know, on our own. Without God. Now, Tim and I were just talking about this. We were trying to uh, come up with a kind of a timeline, but not too very 
far back, God had just rid the whole world of all of these sinful people. And here, seemingly a short time later, here they are, right back at it again. I can, I can translate some inane act into a message which comes literally from God. Now, acquiring the knowledge to build bigger, better, stronger, safer, is, is very much among those gifts. And uh, to jump sideways again in the New Testament, in the book of James, uh, one of the lesser epistles, he wrote, all good things, excuse me, Tim, I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, but all good things come from God which is to say, all of these gifts which are beneficial come from God. Throughout the course of history, uh, there have been a multitude of examples where man has constructed stuff simply to show off, the World Trade Center being one of them. Uh, you know, you, there have been instances where bridges have been built, not simply to get from one side of the river to the other, but no, we have to build a bridge that the whole world is going to notice. The whole world's going to go Google and Google, ah, oh my, look at how wonderful they are. No, that isn't, that is not using the abilities or the gifts God has given to his, to his, uh, to his glory. You know, we have to make no mistake, utilizing the technology, innumerable thousands of benefits have been conferred upon humanity. But... That's the point. God wants us to use these gifts to his glory and to benefit our fellow man. Achievement, you know, uh, arguably, you know, the internet. That's wonderful. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, okay, I'm going to pick on you guys. You guys have the ability, when you do your schoolwork, you can do the same amount of research in 15 seconds that it took me a week to do. And that is, that is not a joke. I'm bringing that out because there are so many times when I'm, when I'm working, on my, uh, uh, working on my talk times, I'm thinking, gee, where is, that, where is that particular passage? I go to Google, I type in a couple of, couple of words that are out of it, I hit return, and all of a sudden, boom, there, James, 117, you know, or this, or that. I type in the word Babel, and all of a sudden I've got a a list of scripture references about the story of Babel. That, you know, God knows what I want to do. God knows I want to help you understand his message. And he is helping me. Which, by the way, Tim, what did I forget to do? <laughs> Your opening Bible passage, right? Thank you. Uh, no, he's got a different one. The, the one he uses each time. Uh, Solomon. Uh, oh no, I take that back. The, this was one of the Psalms of David. When I am working on my uh, uh, working on my talk times, you know, I open this up and I put a note right in the very front of my Bible here, and it says, "Everything starts with Psalm 19, verse 14, which says, "Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight." What that is saying is, it is a plea that, Lord. Please help me say the right thing that you want. Thank you for giving us this time to share your word. Uh, we, we, we thank you heartfelt for all of the innumerable gifts you have given. And we ask that you guide us to use those gifts to your glory and to the benefit of our, human, of our fellow human beings. And we ask all of this because of the sufferings and the sacrifice your son gave to us for our eternity. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Amen.
guys have your attention. I'll wait. I'll wait for everybody to show respect for the opening. Um, Amanda, you went and bought all this? Yeah, I bought all this because I figured um, with everything that's been going on, everyone's been so, actually, that no what's going on, have been so nice, and I figured I'd just get pizza for everyone to share. Wow, she is expressing oh, herself you. to everyone, saying, uh, you're awesome. well, you're all great, you're all wonderful. There, we're, the, we're the pizza party. Okay, so the best. Jordan? The three, pe the three pizzas I ended up getting were cheese, pepperoni, and then it's a three meat treat. It's pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. Oh, that's gonna go oh, fast. Fast. That's gonna go really fast. No, they, they get one piece. One piece each and one crazy bread. One crazy bread and one uh, piece. And then also, uh, you can have as much cake as you want. Uh, she brought in cake today. I think that might be banana. No. We also have cookies it's up cookies. here that we'll bring down and later. But when Dale we'll just go with that. Okay, just so everyone, when Dale gets here, no one tell him because he don't know yet. I have a cake that I brought and for him for his birthday. Okay, so that's was that that was gonna be the, that was uh, that was last time. That was gonna be the next announcement. Is that uh, is this uh, observing Dale's birthday too? Okay, observing Dale's birthday, which is by the way today. 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 No All right, let's have a prayer. Let's have a prayer. No one said happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right, let's pray. Jordan. We're waiting. Okay. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Please don't uh, talk or anything like that or mess around during prayer, okay? Um, not only gets me very upset, but uh, I'm sure God, because we're talking to him. So we pray. All right? Yes, amen. Okay, here we, here we go. Dear Lord, thank you so much for all of your wonderful blessings that you give us day after day, the blessings for our bodies and the blessings for our souls. We thank you for the life that you've given to each one of these kings. That life that comes from you as you are uh, God who is the creator of all. Uh, as we thank you for that life, we thank you for the friendship that we have. We pray, <coughs> Lord, that that friendship is an eternal one. As we pray that the teens that are here also believe in their Savior Jesus for forgiveness and eternal life. If that is the case, then they are also one with us through the blood of Jesus in your family. <coughs> Lead us then to appreciate that and show that appreciation in our lives by treating one another with the kind of love that you have treated, treated us with, and that is an unconditional love that shows kindness and compassion to one another. Lead us, dear Lord, to forgive each other like you have forgiven us. Teach us of forgiveness as you have us constantly go back to the cross of Jesus, where he went for us and paid for all of our sins. Help us, dear Lord, to reflect that in everything that we do and say and think in our lives. And we ask you, dear Savior, to be our guest. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Amen. Open. Hang on. I might have to rip it. Yeah. Dale, can I break? I want to break. I'm not doing so bad. There. Got it, got stuck. Yeah. Rock on. Oh, I got three more dollars. Where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? Got it. Put the cat on the front. Put the cat. 